So let's talk about how you can immigrate to Canada in this blessed year 2022 and I'm going to focus on four different pathways which are Express Entry, PNP, Quebec and Family Sponsorship. I'm only going to focus on four but ideally there are about a hundred different pathways which you can use to immigrate to Canada. How amazing is that? Hello, welcome back to Accord TV and if you're checking in for the very first time my name is Accord and on this channel all we do is we immigrate, we travel and we just live life and like mentioned earlier in today's video i mean if 2022 is your year to relocate i'm going to outline for you guys four different pathways which you can easily use to immigrate to canada but before you pack your bags be sure to check on canada's travel restrictions as they are right now if you're not sure how to go about that or where to get that information you can always check in you know for weekly updates which i do if i don't make like a full video then i'll always post something on the community but again if you have any question or concern just be sure to comment and i will always respond to you as soon as i can so the reason i am saying you need to check on canada's travel restrictions is because Canada is starting off the year with the record case of COVID-19 cases like their cases cases are super high up there up there that's why there are restrictions and they keep updating them every other day so you wake up today it's one thing the next day it's a totally different thing the federal government recently reintroduced the requirements for incoming travelers to take the pre-arrival PCR test. Starting January 15, most foreign travelers will have to be fully inoculated with a vaccine which is recognized and accepted by the Canadian government. I made a video on this channel not too long ago outlining the vaccines, the COVID vaccines, which are accepted by the government. So if you've never watched that video, I'm going to link it in the comment section down below. Well, as of now, students, workers, and approved permanent residents can still move to Canada provided they follow the public health guidelines. So starting with the first one, express entry. Express entry is Canada's main immigration pathway. Like it's the main one. The number one the main one. It is the application manager for three economic class immigration program, which are Canadian experience class, federal skilled worker program, and federal skilled trades program. If you're eligible to any of the programs that I have mentioned, then you may also be able to apply for the provincial nominee program, which is aligned to express entry. Although it's definitely not necessary for all PNPs. Some PNPs are managed by the province's own application system. And and they may be more suitable for some people who are not eligible for express entry. Express entry operates on a point grid system. Okay, so this is where you file your case and then they check on your age, education, work experience, and then give you points. So depending on how many points you get, if you get higher points, then you're at large. If you get lower points, that's when you find that you have to fall back on PNP. And points lately of late they've been around 400 and above. So if you get anything lower than that, then it means the system will not be able to pick you for you to immigrate to Canada okay so when that happens I always say when that happens there's still hope then there's PNP you can apply for it okay but there are different ways you can use to improve your points you can go back to school and get more certificates you can go back to work and add on your experience you can learn a bit of French to just add on to your points and then you are good to go maybe what you need to understand is that not everyone who applies for express entry will be able to apply to move to canada like it's not a hundred percent guarantee but if you're working on the express entry way you have to you know leave your options open to look for other means if express entry is not working for you but in many cases express entry works it has worked for many people and it will continue working for many people so the way we normally say it it's positive vibes only we are doing this thing this is your year so what happens is the IRCC invites candidates who have like high points and like super high points and this is done every two weeks. Every two weeks they invite people, every two weeks they invite people. So you want to work on making sure that you do everything possible to just keep your points up there. Because if the cutoff point, let's say you are going into a draw and then the cut 
cutoff point is let's say 400 points so if you have 400 points then it's a guarantee you're going to get an invitation to apply but if you get anything lower than that then you have to look for other options and remember earlier in this video i mentioned that there are about a hundred different pathways to immigrate to canada so we are not losing hope irrespective of what your situation may be moving to canada is still a dream which is very much achievable ideally the processing time for pnp is supposed to be six months but last year 2021 we noticed that the processing time took about nine months and that's because of the pandemic it's because of covid people are not going to work others were sick others lost their lives and a lot was going on so for 2021 it was nine months though ideally it's supposed to be six months so we don't know what's going to happen in the year 2022 but as time goes by i will keep you guys updated so just rest easy but again according to the latest information that i received ircc has a backlog of about 1.8 million immigration applications to process so you can imagine what's going to happen in 2022 it's going to take at least one year and maybe more months depending on how fast they try to push out things it's going to take a little longer not six months like it used to be not nine months like it was in 2021 but in 2022 i'm projecting a bit longer maybe one year two months or something like that but we will see i'll keep you guys updated but the good news is rcc the canadian government they're trying to do everything possible just to make sure that the applications are processed and canada can get immigrants because canada needs immigrants canada needs workers canada needs people the country is cold and they need a few individuals to go and maybe freeze over there no, i'm just joking i'm just joking the thing is the canadian government is trying to do everything possible to make sure that those applications and everything pending is taken care of as fast as possible humanly possible if i may say the best thing about express entry is that it allows you to apply to immigrate to any province in canada which is why it has its own independent segment now let's move on to the second pathway which is p and P. Provincial nominee program. Provincial nominee program is the best bet for those who do not qualify to be in the express entry or for those who are looking at adding more points to their profile. The thing is, if you apply to any province of your choice except Alberta, which does not have the mandate to process their own PNP, you can apply to any other province and then that province will invite you. And once you accept it, it means you get another 600 points on top of whatever you have. So if you have something like 300, you are given 600 more points, then it's a guarantee. It's a hundred percent you are moving to Canada. So PNP is the best bet for anyone who does not qualify for express entry. But again, it's still advisable if you're planning to immigrate to Canada and you need to go to a specific province, then there's no harm going the PNP way and applying to that province. Let's say Manitoba. Apply to Manitoba, get your invitation to apply, earn your 600 points, add it onto your express entry profile and whatever. And before you know it, the time it will take for you to immigrate to Canada will be shorter because PNP just makes things easier okay so the best thing again about pnp because you are working with just one specific province you can choose you can choose which one you want to go to and then when it comes to language they normally ask for band five at places like manitoba they normally just go for band four and it makes things you know much easier express entry asks for more points but for pnp they normally ask for less band for the english test or the french test so it, they make life just a bit easier and then if you're processing through one specific province the process tends to move a bit faster compared to when you go the big way the express entry way so the connection point that i really need you guys to get is you can file for express entry and still again file for pnp and if anything most pnp programs will require you to have an express entry profile before you can apply for pnp so what I'm trying to say is there are two types of PNPs. The first one is enhanced PNPs, which use the express entry pool to draw candidates and base PNPs, which operate independently from express entry. So those are the two types of PNPs. If anyone asks you, now you know. Base PNPs are more focused on recruiting candidates who support regional economic and population growth strategies. They are open to people who have connections to the province such as local study or work experience as well as workers whose professional experience falls under the national occupation classification that is noc skill levels c and d 
which are not eligible for express entry. Now let's move on and talk about Quebec immigration, which is the third pathway to immigrate to Canada. The primarily French-speaking province of Quebec has its own immigration program. Although the federal government still has the final say on who gets permanent residency, it cannot make sweeping immigration policy that applies to Quebec. To immigrate to Quebec, you need a certificate de sélection du Quebec, that is CSQ, which is administered by the Ministère de la Migration, Ministry of Immigration, Dollar Francis Satio et de l'Integration, that is MIFI. You can get the CSQ by applying for one of Quebec's immigration programs. For instance, Quebec's Regular Skilled Worker Program, Quebec Experience Program, and Quebec permanent immigration pilot programs. Once you get your CSQ, it confirms to the federal government that Quebec has selected you for immigration. Quebec has chosen you for immigration. You can then use this to apply for your immigration through the IRCC through the express entry pool. Last but not least, let's move on and talk about family sponsorship as another pathway for you to immigrate to Canada in 2022. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, it is obvious if you have family in Canada, you may be eligible to apply to move to Canada through the family sponsorship. Canadians can sponsor their spouses and common law partners, their dependent children and adult relatives. And by adult relatives, I mean your parents, or your parents, the man and woman who give birth to you. And to add on that, of course, you can sponsor your grandparents as well. So you bring your parents to Canada and you bring your grandparents to Canada as well. How cool is that? And in some cases, still Canadians may be eligible to sponsor other family members besides husband, wife, children, parents, grandparents in some other instances, which I will make clear on a different video because if I add that into this video, which I already feel could be a little bit longer, that would be too much information in one sitting. Okay, so in another video, I'm going to tell you guys which other family members you can invite if you're a Canadian or a permanent resident living in Canada and you want to sponsor your family to come join you. And for you to sponsor Sponsor your family members, there are some eligibility criteria that must be followed. Number one, you as the sponsor, you must be able to declare, show, and prove that you can support whoever you are intending to sponsor. I mean, you cannot sponsor someone and you cannot manage your own life. So for you to sponsor someone, another family member, you have to have some proof that you can support them financially and in everything else. And how do you do that? you're working, you're doing business, declare, show us how much money you have for us to allow you to bring your family member into the country. That is just how it works. And on the other hand, the person who is being sponsored has to pass the criminal background check. They cannot be criminals. They cannot have any record of them being criminals. And they must also pass the medical check no diseases, no terminal illnesses, as long as they're clear on that end that everything should just flow. Okay, so these people, they do background check. And most of the time, they will want to be sure that, let's say you're trying to sponsor your spouse to move to Canada. The IRCC will want to make sure that you did not get married to this person just for the sake of immigrating to Canada. They will do their due diligence and just make sure that you are being real. So each of the four programs has their own eligibility criteria and depending on which country you are coming from, you may be asked for different documents. So you may be coming from Nigeria, someone else is coming from Kenya, someone else is coming from Uganda. Really, you cannot compare notes and say, oh, by the way, what a court is saying, mm -mm -mm -mm, me, they asked me for my documents and this is what I presented. It's different for every country. So coming from Nigeria, they may ask you for different documents. Coming from Uganda or Tanzania or wherever it is, they may ask you for different documents or maybe the same and then you add on something extra. So it's different for everyone, okay? It's never the same, but there's the basic ones. There's the basic ones which are more or less the same for everyone, but not everyone is always required to submit the same documents. I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you've gotten value out of watching this video, then remember to to like the video comment if you have any questions or concern share with your friends and loved ones and subscribe to aqua tv if you have not but the way we normally do it here without forgetting we are keeping it positive vibes only and i'll see you all in the next one